What's up guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon video and today we are going to be talking about terrains. Yes, you heard me right, terrains. Now this will include some going over on the information from the data demo mine, de demo data mine, I can never say that right. Anyway. We'll be going over some of that, so of course if you're avoiding the leaks, please do feel free to click off the video now because it will be part of the video itself. So, the whole reason why we're talking about terrains of course is down to Tapu Koko, who when it was revealed got a new ability which displayed electric electric terrain down on the the battlefield basically now electric terrain was introduced in generation 6 a long time the type alongside the two other types of terrain misty terrain and grassy terrain now this was a very underused feature very unused battle technique because it you had to use a turn to set it up of course but Tapu Koko's ability now just spreads that automatically so we might be seeing a sort of a more of a, a leaning towards that sort of thing so what do the terrains do? Well, of course, Electric Terrain stops Pokemon from falling asleep, as well as also increasing the power of Electric type moves by 50%. So basically, it's good for Electric type Pokemon. And of course, if you are, I don't know, maybe fighting against the opponent that likes to use Yawn a lot, then of course it's going to be helpful there, just to prevent sleep. Of course, if you've been yawned, you could set it up, and of course you're not going to fall asleep. So that so that's what that does. The Misty Terrain then uh, actually prevents not sleep, but it does prevent any non-volatile status condition, which might include sleep, I don't know. Anyway, non-volatile, which would be poison, paralysis, burn, so basically any, any sort of status condition generally. Uh, and as well as this, yeah, Pokemon cannot fall asleep while the terrain is up. If they're already asleep, then they won't wake up, but they can't fall asleep when it's up. Whereas Electric Terrain would have woken Pokemon up. As well as this, it also reduces the damage of dragon type attacks by 50%. So it halves dragon dragon type attacks. It doesn't double fairy for some reason, I guess, because it's used as a more defensive field uh, rather than, you know, so it's very good for Clefable, for example. But of course, it's immune to dragon anyway, so again, who knows why that's put in there. And then finally, we have the grassy terrain, which basically, f for every yeah, you know, every turn it restored 16th, uh, 1 16th of a Pokemon's health points at the end of every turn for everyone on the field. Now you have to bear in mind the terrain sort of effects. Yes, we have weather, which affects the whole battlefield. That's really nothing too special there. The terrain only affects Pokemon that are grounded. So for example, Pikachu is grounded. Whalmer, grounded. But then you get to Pokemon that are flying type or levitate or anything like that. They're not grounded, so they don't gain the effects or the detriments of this. So for example, they wouldn't gain the extra health points from grassy terrain. And they would also not gain the extra you know, the, the benefits of electric terrain and fairy terrain, or misty terrain rather, um, of you know, not having any status conditions basically. But of course then, alternately, if you have a flying dragon or dragon flying Pokemon, it's not going to be affected by the 50% drop in the misty terrain. So it sort of works both ways. So why are we talking about terrains now? We've spoken about it before, thinking maybe, okay, we can get different sorts of terrains for each of the Guardians, and depending on what that types those could be, those could be new. And, yes, of course, now we have seen the Guardians, and we also know, thanks to the demo, there was a move left in there, and that move is Psychic Terrain. Yes, a new type of terrain, the Psychic Terrain actually prevents priority moves, as well as boosting Psychic type moves by 50%, very similar to the Electric Terrain. So why is that the new terrain? Well, of course, as we theorized, there are going to be four guardians and each of those is going to have a type. We have Tapu Koko, which is Electric Fairy. Then we're going to have the Guardian of Kala Island, which will be Psychic Fairy. The Guardian of the Largest Island, which will be Fire Fairy. And then finally, the Guardian of the, the Canyon Island, which will be Ghost Fairy. Thanks to Oricorio leaking out, or not leaking out, but hinting out those types there. And of course, the Fairy being sort of the common type across the whole group. So Psychic Terrain will be a good guess, good bet to say the Guardian of Akala will have you know, an ability that activates Psychic Terrain when it goes on the field, because of course that's going to boost its Psychic type moves by 50%, make it very powerful, and of course, I mean, in terms of priority moves, it's not necessarily a, a direct boost to it, it's just a, you know, an alternate effect. Which leads the fact in, okay, we have two more Guardians, we've had two Guardians so far that likely will display terrain upon entering the battle, why not have the other two Guardians do the similar thing? Now we have a Fire Fairy and a Ghost Fairy, as I mentioned, now there is no Fire Terrain, there is no Ghost Terrain, which leads me to believe that there will be two new types of terrain, at least two, I would say probably just the extra two here, as well as Psychic Terrain, introduced in Generation 7 in terms of moves and abilities and such, obviously the Fire Fairy will have an ability that puts out Fiery Terrain, and the Ghost Fairy will have an ability that puts out possibly ghostly terrain. So two types of terrain there. Now let's talk about what they should do. So of course each of the terrains we've seen so far has gener generally a boost to a type, so either plus 50% electric, minus 50% dragon, 
plus 50% grass and then plus 50% psychic there. So it only makes sense that the, you know, these two should then do similar things. I related to fire and, and ghost themselves, so maybe increasing the power of fire type moves by 50%, increasing the power of ghost type moves by 50%, or alternately reducing the power of a, a move that rivals it, okay? Or a type that rivals it. So for fire terrain, for example, it could reduce the power of grass type moves by 50%, because of course if it's a grass move on a fiery train, it's going to burn up. But also they could go down the route of saying, let's just reduce the power of wards type moves, because then that would be a nice boost to fire types using the fiery terrain, because then they take less damage. They might do that, but then again, dragon was linked to misty terrain, and obviously fairy's already good against dragon, so... Maybe it's just an extra boost there, exactly. In terms of ghostly terrain, what they could do in terms of you know, reducing other types, normal, I suppose, but they're already immune to it again, so maybe they could reduce dark, something like that. I'm not sure what you'd do for ghosts, really. So I think probably boost the moves, you know, boost the types generally. I mean, fire, yes, it has a lot of power to it already, so it might benefit from a, a, a sort of a damage reduction from its attacks hitting it, but a power boost is pretty cool as well, same for the ghost. So then what's the alternate effect? Because obviously we have this move type boost what's the alternate effect going to be for electric we had no sleep for misty we had no volatile status no non-volatile status conditions to say so no burn no paralysis and no poison and then grass we have health point sort of regeneration and then the psychic we have um what was it no priority so not sorry direct boosts to the type but it's, you know, it's an alternate effect so you could use this terrain with other sorts of pokemon in terms of the fire one, I feel like maybe you could have a terrain that when the terrain comes out it burns every Pokemon that's you know, grounded. Obviously fire types might be immune to this, uh, and obviously any Pokemon that comes out later on onto the fiery terrain would then be burnt. It's a possibility, but I don't see it happening since we haven't really linked them to causing status effects. You know, electric terrain, you could say, okay, every Pokemon that comes out is paralysed. I mean, that's a bit of an OP thing to do, but you know, they didn't do it, so I just don't think they're going to do it for fiery terrain either. So it could be something very sort of different, maybe like, okay, it increases the speed of all grounded type Pokemon, or DC increases the speed, something like that, decreases the attack, similar to burn, uh, or something like that indeed. And then the ghosty terrain, I have a pretty good, sort of what I'd like to see. We had the grassy terrain which restores health points, and ghost is the perfect type to reduce health points bit by bit. You know, think of something like, um, you know, curse, which, you know, once you had later curse on you from a ghost type, you lose health points every single turn, until of course, you die. So it might be sort of a cool one to have you know, lose 16 uh, or 16th of health points uh, every single turn for all grounded Pokemon. So of course you would be affected by it as well as your opponent. So it would speed up the battle to some extent, and of course it would add a bit of sort of competitive edge, I guess you could say. So you have, you, know, you might want to carry around a you know flying type um, or non-grounded Pokemon to avoid this health point reduction, reduction and you know, help beat out your enemy. So that might be interesting there in terms of that, but apart from that I'm not too sure on ideas, so feel free to let me know yours down below, because of course they could go anywhere with a fiery and the ghostly terrain, they could you know, do some status stuff, they could do some health point stuff. Let me know if you have any ideas what they might do, because they'll be interesting terrain types, because obviously then we'll have electric, fairy, grass, psychic fire and ghost. So no water, no no, uh, well no water basically. Uh, but we have you know surf, well not surf, but you know rain to do water. So I think it's sort of as a parallel to weather because obviously weather you have sandstorms, which is a ground and sort of slash rock and slash steel and stuff. You have rain, which is really you know, water. Sunny day, yes, is related to fire types, but also to grass types. So I suppose it's 50-50 there, and both of those have gotten a terrain. And then uh, other types, we have hail for obviously ice types there which is your general weather sort of patterns, if for defog maybe for flying types if you really want to go that far. Uh, so sort of weather types, those are all your effects on typings. So in the electric, obviously, yes, okay, you have like, th you know, rain, which is related to electric type, you know, boosting like thunder and stuff, um, but generally it's not. So you have electric, we have fairy, we have grass, and we have psychic, fire, and ghost. All types that you wouldn't be able to make weather for, you know, what, what weather is going to be related to psychic or ghost, you know, like... A downpour of you know, souls, you know, it's not not really gonna work. So I th think that's what Pokemon are sort of pushing towards with the terrains. They introduced a few then and a few more now. So every type of, well, maybe not every type eventually, but most types eventually will have their sort of own environmental effect. I suppose you could say whether it's weather or terrain, or maybe even introduce something else later on uh, to affect the battle basically and to maybe open up the competitive scene 
to a bit more, you know, more variety, I suppose you could say. I mean, yes, as I mentioned earlier, terrains weren't even utilised really that much in Generation 6 because there were no good ways to set them up. But now we have these four Guardians, which likely won't be Ubers here, I wouldn't say. Um, they can just be sort of, you know, the leads for your team to set up the terrains you want or to, you know, hold back and bring them in and then you can you know, affect the battlefield and switch them out again to whatever Pokemon you want. For example, the grassy terrain, yes, okay, there won't be a, a guard, you know, it's sort of laying it down. But if there was, for example, you could put them out, grassy terrain, put them back and send out a Pokemon with grass pelt. So, Go Goat, for example, double its defense and it'd be a really bulky Pokemon. Uh, and obviously it's restoring health points as well, which works really well in tandem. So, stuff like that I feel like would be really cool to introduce to the competitive scene. So we'll see how they go and how used it, how, you know, how much it gets picked up, I suppose, by the community. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and let me know what you think the fiery terrain and ghostly terrain will be doing in terms of battle effects but this is gonna be for me for today so i'll be seeing you next time thank you for watching goodbye my friends <laughs>